uh, short excerpts, but we ask that you hold your applause until we get to the end of the lecture because we don't want to run over. So anyway, uh, in the beginning, or when Adolf Sachs invented the saxophone in the 1840s, he already had experience inventing a family of homogeneous instruments with this family of sax horns from soprano to contrabass. Of course, his goal with the saxophone was to bridge the gap between the woodwinds and the brass by making an instrument out of brass that used a mouthpiece and reed like the clarinet. The first saxophone built was the bass saxophone. It was rumored that sax was prepared to display this first instrument at the Belgian Industrial Exposition in 1841. According to Adolf's friend, George Casper, this item was draped with a cloth and unfortunately an adversary came by and kicked it over. So Adolf was unable to show the damage instrument. By 1842, Hector Berlioz, one of Adolf Sachs' best friends, mentioned the instrument in his treatise of instrumentation with the description, a tambour quite its own, vaguely similar to that of the violoncello, the clarinet, and the English horn, with a half-metallic admixture, which gives it an altogether peculiar expression. There was no personal account of the saxophone's invention, but the first documented appearance of the instrument came at the Paris Exposition in 1844. By 1846, Adolf Sachs had taken out a 15-year patent for a full family of saxophones, Sopranino to Carpeas. With the support of many composers in Paris and the inclusion of the saxophone in uh, the French military bands, the saxophone gained enough acceptance that Adolf Sachs was hired to teach saxophone at the Paris Conservatory in 1857. Little solo music was av available for winds in the 1800s, with the exception of for flute. And so Adolf made uh, requests of many of his composer friends to write for the new instrument. One such friend, Jean-Baptiste saint was among the first to treat the instrument seriously. He composed over 30 solo de concours for various members of the saxophone family. The ensemble that we know of as the saxophone quartet, soprano, alto, tenor, and baritone, was the suggestion of saint -Gelais. Adolf Sachs and Jean-Baptiste saint had met while students at the Royal School of Music in Brussels. Sajale encouraged Adolf to develop the four principal members of the saxophone family and composed what is likely the first work ever written for the saxophone quartet, Premier Contour, Opus 53, in 1857. We will now perform the first movement of this historic work, the Andante and Allegro.
It did not fare so well with the orchestra. A few composers in the Vedal sax wrote orchestral works that utilized the saxophone. In some cases, a quartet of instruments was used, as in Olivet's Le Jeu Ferrand for the Wandering Jew of 1852. Later in 1903, Richard Strauss used a saxophone quartet in his Symphonia Domestica. Unfortunately, due to the lack of saxophonists in Germany for the premiere, these parts had to be made optional and were doubled in other instruments. On March 21, 1904, H. Benny Hinton was involved in the first Carnegie Hall performance of Richard Strauss's Symphonia Domestica. Hinton was chosen by Strauss to lead the saxophone quartet during the March 21st concert, which was not only the first performance of Strauss's work in America, but also the first performance using the instrumentation designated, designated by the composer. Belgian, Belgian band leader Louis Ajulien is credited with spreading the saxophone not only in his country, but to Great Britain with the band's 1850 tour and to the United States in 1856. This band sported a section of five saxophones from soprano to bass. By 1854 in London, there were advertisements for saxophones. Prince Albert and the Duke of Cambridge supported having them in their military bands. One example of saxophone quartet music by an English composer is Allegro de Concert by Carol Florio of 1879. By 1873, the Gilmore Band in the U.S. added two saxophonists, one the soloist A. Alaphebe of France, and by 1878, they had a soprano, alto, tenor, baritone quartet. Following the end of the Gilmore Band's run, John Philip Sousa hired many of their players to include with them. And around 1905, Metronome Magazine stated, this is in quotes, Mr. Lefebvre organized a select quartet of saxophones, which made a remarkable tour from ocean to ocean, rendering adaptations of popular and classical music for the public, and revealing conclusively, conclusively the possibilities of this music instrument. The saxophone quartet, with its mellow or soft and beautifully blending parts, appeals to the heart like a divine choir of voices accompanied by a skillfully played grand organ." End quote. Saxophones were an integral part of the Sousa band, varying in number from as few as three in 1892 to 1898 to as many as eight from 1922 to 1928. During the 1920s and the early 1930s, the saxophones enjoyed a dual role with Sousa. In addition to their part in the band, they played as a separate ensemble from six to eight players that performed on almost every concert, as well as for Sousa sponsored engagements outside of the band. The saxophone ensemble, the Sousa Saxophone Corps, would normally be featured during intermission, as were other groups from within the band, and would play a variety of selections, often novelty and popular items, such as Wild Women and Johnny's in Town, two popular syncopated melodies. Sousa composed one work for his saxophones, an untitled one step for seven saxophones, one soprano, two altos, two tenors, a baritone, and a bass. Reviews of Sousa concerts continue to reveal that a saxophone octet was stealing the show. This novelty type of repertoire for saxophone echoed what was occurring across the United States during what is called the saxophone craze. The saxophone in America during the early 1900s became popular with many amateur musicians due to its tone quality, expressiveness, and versatility. The most popular saxophone of this time was the C tenor, originally part of the family invented by sax, pitched in F and C for use in the orchestra. It became known as the C melody. This instrument could easily be used in the home, at church, and for popular music due to the fact that it was non-transposing. Advertisements of C.G. Kahn and Busher Band Instrument Companies touted the saxophone is easy to learn, play scales in an hour, tunes in a week. <laughs> Rudy Weedoff was an American saxophone virtuoso of the C melody in the 1920s, performing in vaudeville and as a solo recitalist. In response, saxophone quartets, sextets, and even larger saxophone bands sprang up across the country. A quote from a Busher advertisement from Rising Star, Texas says, our quartet is getting along splendidly, and the boys are wild about their bushers. There are also instruction manuals on how to conduct saxophone bands. The Schuster Sisters Saxophone Quartet played in hotels and concert halls across the country and played con saxophones. Saxophone quartets even sometimes replaced organs in churches during this time. One of the famous saxophone ensembles of the day was the Six Brown Brothers. In the beginning, the group was a quintet that first recorded in 1911 performing American Patrol, the Bullfrog and the Coon Medley. Soon they added the sixth member, Harry Finkelstein. In 1914, they performed their hit Chin Chin in a Broadway review. 
Then they appeared with Ezekiel Follies and toured on the Orpheum circuit. All sizes of saxophones were used, but most of their photos show two altos, a tenor, two baritones, and a bass. They continued to tour until 1933. We will now perform the six Brown Brothers Bullfrog Blues by Tom Brown and Gus, Gus Shrigley for, for saxophone quartet, arranged by Harry Yee.
keyboards or saxophones of Paris. Many more composers wrote for the group in a style of French saxophone quartets emerged. Our next example is, a, is typical of this style with virtuosic technique. Eugene Bosa's Nuage, which was dedicated to, to the Paris Saxophone Quartet in 1946. Thank you. 
and this Percy Granger became acquainted with the saxophone around 1904 to 1905, and during World War I, he enlisted in the U.S. Army Band as a saxophonist. He is known for highlighting the saxophone in his wind band compositions, and he arranged a number of works for the saxophone choir. He later composed and arranged some of his works for a saxophone quintet. In other parts of Europe, the saxophone had obstacles in gaining acceptance. In Russia, for example, Count Alexander Sheremetev, a composer, conductor, and entrepreneur, founded his own private symphony orchestra in 1882, which employed five saxophones. Four of them formed a quartet. After the revolution, there was a gap until 1920 when dance bands and variety shows came to Russia with the saxophone. The first Russian recording of the Vazadov Quartet didn't occur until the 1960s. Gustav Bucha was the first German to seriously study the saxophone. In 1902, he went to Paris and studied with the son of Adolf Sachs. In 1926, he wrote the first saxophone method book in the German language. He formed the German, excuse me, he formed the Berlin Saxophone Quartet in 1932 and composed two quartets. Uh, there had been no saxophones in the Prussian military bands during the late 1800s due to Adolf Sachs' confrontation with Wilhelm Bachbrecht, the director general of all the guard bands in Prussia. The saxophone was rarely encountered in Germany prior to 1920. There was one German saxophone manufacturer, Oscar Wilder and Company, but it was not until the 1924 to 1929 jazz age in Berlin that you started to see the saxophone with any frequency. Once the Nazi party came to power in 1933, however, the saxophone was banned as they regarded it as a cheap and potentially destructive form of entertainment. The racial connotations uh, to African Americans and the development of jazz con contributed to this philosophy. Our next example is an excerpt uh, from Wilka's Two Quartets, Opus 23. Thank you. Thank you. 
continue to be a popular chamber ensemble in the United States due to the group's flexibil flexibility for a variety of performance styles. In Hollywood, California, during the 1950s, a group of studio musicians decided to form a saxophone quartet after hearing recordings of the Marcel Mule Quartet. The group formed in 1950 and was active until 1970. Their first performance was in 1951 and consisted of French classical repertoire. The players, Russell Cheever on soprano, Jack Dumont on alto, Morris Crawford on tenor, and William Uliate on baritone, were at 20th Century Fox Studios. The object of their quartet was to, quote, play good music in a legit style, much the same as in a string quartet, end quote. They wanted to go beyond their daily routines, performing on chamber concert series all around the Los Angeles area. They produced four albums, Jazz in Hollywood of 1957, Warm Winds of 1957, Sax Appeal in 1958, and French Impressions in 1959. The group sent their recording of French repertoire to Marcel Mule, who responded that it was a fine performance. The Jazz in Hollywood and Sax Appeal albums contain jazz arrangements by such Hollywood giants as Billy May, Lenny Niehaus, and Marty Pache, as well as this original work by Russ Garcia, Miniature Symphony for Saxophones. We will perform the third movement, Scherzo. Thank you. 
In Belgium, you see this influence with Francois Daniel. Daniel started playing the saxophone at the age of 14 in the band, then in the music school in Ibiza, his hometown. At the age of 18, in 1939, he obtained the first prize of saxophone at the Royal Music Conservatory in Brussels and gave his first sax saxophone recital on the radio. In 1943, he started to teach at the music school of Ibiza. In 1953, he founded the Belgian Quartet of Saxophones, which later became the Quintet, Septet, and even Octet. Daniels was appointed to be the first saxophone professor at the Royal Music Conservatory of Brussels in 1954, where he taught until 1981. During his entire rich career as soloist and teacher, he strove to make the classical saxophone known. He's the founder of, of the Belgian School of Saxophone, uh, which he gladly presents as a blend of the French School of Marcel Mille and the American School, a mixture characterized by the quality of the sound, the rhythmic rigor, the observance of nuances, and the respect of the text of the pieces studied. Daniel de Vallée heard Marcel Mille perform in 1938 and he joined Mille's class at the Paris Conservatory in 1941. In 1956, Dufayet formed his own quartet, and in 1968 was asked to replace Mille at the Paris Conservatory upon his retirement. The Dufayet Quartet performed extensively and recorded four albums, mostly of French compositions. In 1982, Czech composer Dietrich Feld, after having written a concerto, sonata, and mixed quintet for saxophonist Eugene Rousseau, decided to try his hand at a saxophone quartet and dedicated it to the Dufayé Quartet. Feld stated that, quote, the sax quartet is an excellent and magnificent ensemble with a wonderful homogenous sound. I tried to write for the sax quartet the same kind of demanding technical and content music as if, as if I were writing for the string quartet. We will now perform the third movement, scherzo, of the Feld Quartet for saxophone.
1969, the London Saxophone Quartet was formed by Paul Harvey. This group included David Lawrence, Christopher Bradwell, and Peter Ripper, and they hosted the 1976 World Congress at the Royal Congress, uh, College of Music in London. The Saxophone Quartet is now a standard ensemble worthy of serious chamber music study at conservatories and in, in university music schools around the world. There are too many active groups to name them all, but this following slide uh, mentions many of these quartets with their locations listed. Uh, as you can see, some are serious classical ensembles, some are jazz groups, some perform popular arrangements, some perform classical transcriptions, some perform avant-garde contemporary music, and some do a little bit of everything. There are professional quartets, semi-professional quartets, university quartets, military band quartets, and faculty quartets from all over the world. A number of saxophone quartets have won the uh, Music Teachers National Association Collegiate Chamber Music Competition, the um, Alice Coleman Chamber Music Competition, and the renowned Fishhawk Chamber Music Competition. The Arkansas Saxophone Quartet was formed in 2007 by saxophone professors from four different universities in Arkansas. Our group has performed at universities, international conferences, and for special events with a variety of repertoire styles. We will close our performance today with four short excerpts of works by current saxophone quartets. First is from the most famous anonymous saxophone quartet, the Washington Saxophone Quartet of Washington, D.C. All of the members met while performing as military bandsmen in the D.C. area in around 1980. The group is best known for their national public radio performances of lead-in music for the All Things Considered radio program. They have recorded several CDs and performed classical transcriptions, standard works, and jazz arrangements. So we have an excerpt of, of that uh, example. Next, we will perform a work dedicated to the PRISM Saxophone Quartet by William Bolcom. PRISM has performed in Carnegie Hall and has also performed as soloist with the Detroit Symphony and the Cleveland Orchestra. Champions of New Music, PRISM has premiered over 100 works, many by internationally celebrated composers, including Stephen Mackey and William Albright. The title of this Volcom piece is Scherzino from 2004. Third, we will perform an excerpt of an arrangement of Texas songs by David Lovrian of the Texas Saxophone Quartet. You will recognize the opening theme to the Dallas television program, the uh, Eyes of Texas and Deep in the Heart of Texas. The Texas Saxophone Quartet was formed in 1983 with the goal of performing chamber music at the highest level while introducing new audiences to the classical side of the saxophone. Texas Saxophone Quartet has been featured with the United States Navy Band, the Dallas Symphony Orchestra, and the Dallas Wind Symphony. And last, we will play an excerpt of Drastic Measures by Russell Peck, written for the New Century Saxophone Quartet. New Century, who's here at the Congress, uh, performs works of covering genres from classical to contemporary with funk and jazz influences. They made their Carnegie Hall debut in 1993 and have worked with composers Peter Shigley, Arthur Pratt and Cole, Toshiko Akiyoshi, and Bob Minter. And uh, so we will close our program with those excerpts, and we hope that you have enjoyed this tour through the history of the saxophone quartet. <laughs>